Turn the camera around. Aha! There we are. All right, I am live now. Set my camera up. And I like to have the camera up here because I don't like the camera looking up at me. Anyway, all right, everyone, thank you for joining me. And in case you are new to my channel, which I don't think you will be, but I am Alex the Historian. I do all kinds of history videos, um, some of it about Disneyland, some of them about ocean liners, and other such things. Eventually this year I will be branching out into more uh, steam-powered history. So trains, you know, and who knows, other steam-powered stuff. I just love the steam era. So let's see who is in the live stream. We got Everett. Hi, Everett. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Jake. I'm doing good, Jake. Um, I did put a post yesterday saying that I'd be doing a live stream today. Um, so there was at least 24 hours notice, I think. But um, but yeah, um, as long as I'm still in this apartment, it's hard to schedule a live stream because my schedule is just all over the place. But once I have my new apartment, I will have more time to myself. I can actually set times to do live streams, probably even on a consistent schedule, so people will always know when they can tune in for a live stream and like what it's going to be. So that'd be really cool if I could do that, you know. I know eventually I want to do like a like a tea time. Like I have a whole right here, a Cunard tea service from Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, both ships. Um, and I'd like to, like, just have, you know, afternoon tea every day, and during that time I can live stream and talk to people just like this and, you know, stuff like that, so, um, anywho, hello everyone, let me see, uh, got instant notification, good, Ziggy, uh, Zachary says, hi, Alex, which liner do you think had the best interior? Hmm. Mm, gosh, that's really hard to answer because each era, you know, whether it was the Victorian era, the Edwardian era, or even like the Art Nouveau slash Art Deco era, had their own really nice interiors. I mean, even the Queen Elizabeth, the QE2, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, from the 1960s mid-century space age style, it had its own amazing interiors. So I'll answer that with one for each era. I think in the Victorian era, I think the, the, oh, what is it called? <laughs> It's one of the Kaiser ones. Oh, I better lower the phone to silent because whenever people text me, it like the phone vibrates. Um, it's one of the Kaiser Wilhelm ships. I don't remember what it is. Kaiser Wilhelm II, I think it is. Not Der Gloss. A lot of people say Der Gloss, but it's not. It's Kaiser Wilhelm II, I'm pretty sure. Um, I like that one. Beautiful interiors for, for Victorian. Um, in terms of Edwardian, it comes very close between Mauritania and Titanic. I think Mauritania looks beautiful in its own way. Um, Titanic is also beautiful in its own way. I mean, who can resist the Grand Staircase? Like, wow. Um, and then... I'd say when it comes to Art Deco, my preference is Queen Mary. A lot of people really like Normandy, but um, I personally am not a Normandy person. I don't, to me, Normandy doesn't look like beautiful. It looks palatial, but yeah, I, I like the Queen Mary in terms of Art Deco. It's very warm and inviting. All right, let's see who else. Jake says, hey, Alex, I asked you the other live stream, but can you show us the Queen Mary section 
in your background and point us to some of the rooms. Sure. Um, let me see here. Make sure I don't... Um, well, I better catch the phone from this thing. And then what I'll do is I will get to see my messy room again because I'm preparing to move, so I have a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. It'll be hard to see because this is framed and it's in behind glass, so it's like probably going to be really... Um, <laughs> trying to get closer. So each area is labeled. To me, I can see these words very clearly, so I already know what's in there. Um, but uh, I guess I could try to point out some things to you as best I can. Sorry, there's some boxes here that I'm saving for moving, so... Um, all right, let's see. What would I point out to you first? Well, the most apparent things are the boiler rooms. So I can tell you this is boiler room one. It had three scotch boilers. The scotch boilers operated the two turbo generator rooms. Um, and between the two turbo generator rooms, there were seven turbo generators that supplied the ship with electricity. The other boiler rooms had much larger Yarrow boilers. Ironically, they actually weighed less than the Scotch boilers, uh, which is part of the reason why the Queen Mary rolled uh, more easily at sea, uh, because she weighed less than she was originally designed. She was supposed to be have she was supposed to have all double-ended Scotch boilers, but they replaced them with the slightly lighter Yarrow boilers, made her a bit more buoyant and in that way, slightly more top-heavy. I must underline slightly. Um, but anyway, in the back here, we have two of the power... Um, I'm sorry, the propulsion plants. I guess you would call them the the um, turbine generator... Or not, not I'm sorry, turbi turbine engine rooms. I'm speaking too quickly. Um, so you have the forward room and the aft room. The forward room was re was removed uh, when the ship was uh, being turned into a hotel. The aft engine room is still there today and can be visited. And then behind that are the uh, shaft alleys, which had the propeller shafts in them. Um, there were four propellers. So um, generally speaking, the area back here was uh, like second class and also crew spaces. So the crew spaces were towards the back at the bottom and the second class spaces were like here and up here and up here. Uh, amidships, so anywhere from this area to like this area here is pretty much uh, first class with some third class spaces being located, uh, where is it? Somewhere up here, like where it says 155 right there. Those are like some third class areas. And then forward on the ship, there's some other third class. Um, because this is a cutaway, it doesn't show you like the amount of staterooms that surrounded both sides of the ship. So if you were to look, like pretend this Titanic is like the Queen Mary. So because the, the thing is split, the picture up here is split down the middle, you can't really tell, but there's like a lot of, all the cabins are on the sides of the ship while the center is usually has like some kind of public spaces. So that's why on here you don't see too many cabins, but that's just because generally speaking, they were located where the portholes were and with some spaces in the middle. Um, let's see. Some places that still exist on the Queen Mary is the second class uh, main lounge. There is also the first class smoking room. The veranda grill at the top. Uh, let's see. This is the ballroom, which no longer exists, so I don't know why I'm pointing at that. Uh, here is the First class main lounge, that still exists. Down beneath is the first class main restaurant, that still exists. Uh, let's see, most of those spaces are gone. Yeah, there's a lot of like small rooms and stuff, but when it comes to the big public rooms, a lot of them are not there. Here is the first class swimming pool, uh, and that is still there, but inaccessible. 
to people. You can look through like a door and you can see the upper balcony, but not much. You can see the tank of the pool sits right above the uh, forward turbo generator room. I've actually been underneath that pool and looked up and there doesn't appear to be any structural damage of any kind. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be making a video <laughs> explaining what is actually wrong with that room because there's a lot of misconceptions. People, there's a generally accepted thing that um, that the room is is like bowing and collapsing, and it's it's that's really just a half truth. There's actually more to the story, and it's not as bad as people think. Although it's not good in any way, I'll admit that. Um, I'll I'll let this image linger. I'll see if you guys have any questions specifically about the ship. But I'm gonna go through some of these comments while while you guys think of something to look for. Um, <laughs> Dillian, finally a live stream on my day off. Yes, hello Dillian, glad to see you. Uh, let's see, Kevin. Hi Alex, it's Kevin A from SoCal. Hi Kevin, good to see you here. Hello Alan. Hello, Eric. Tea time with Alex. Yeah, I am really excited to do tea time. Who knows? Maybe I can make it a daily thing. We'll see. Kenneth, thank you so much for the donation. Oh, there's no message to read from you, but thank you so much. Let's see. The Jagoti Show. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope. Uh, says, I'm new here. New subscriber. Cool. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jake Goodwin says, oh my God, a car just crashed in front of my house. I'll be back. Police are here, but I'm okay. Oh my gosh. I hope I hope uh, everyone is okay. KSG Games says, hello from Netherlands. Hello. Um, Aloha, Marcel, Al Aloha Mail says, I'll join you for high tea with my complete China set from Holland, America. Nice. I love the Queen Mary too, Evan. Matthew says hello. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Peric. I think it's Peric or Perich. I'm not sure. Says hi from Chandler, Arizona. Um, Dillian says I haven't heard much about the Queen Mary right now, but what's going on with Long Beach repairs, etc.? So I plan to do an update every month. So as you know, I did a December update. That's why I labeled it December, um, because I wanted people to know that there would be one every month. And essentially in the December update, I kind of talked about like uh, what the, the future plans were for the updates of the ship and stuff. And actually since I, like literally like just days after I did that update, there was some new information to relay to people, which I'm going to be telling in the next few days. Um, I'm just waiting if there's going to be any new information to tell within the coming days, uh, then I want to tell it uh, all at once. I don't want to like have to make multiple videos about multiple things because some people are only tuning in. But um, I don't mind telling you here on the live stream. I don't think there's going to be like a million people watching uh, specifically this live stream to hear about the Queen Mary's news, so I don't mind telling it. Um, basically... Um, so the Queen Mary, as I said in December update, has been approved uh, for $5 million worth of work. There are essentially a few main projects that this money is going to be spent on. So first thing is you can see that all the, all the compartments under the water line are separated by watertight bulkheads. Um, when they converted the ship to a hotel, they actually opened up holes in many of these bulkheads. No, they did not cut through structural beams like many people think they did. Uh, it, a bulkhead on a ship is a lot like a wall in a house. Um, even if it's a load-bearing wall, the load is actually put into the wood studs spaced every 16 inches in a wall, right? The wood studs hold the load, not the drywall on, you know, not the plaster, not the drywall. That doesn't hold the load. It's the wood beams spaced in between inside the wall. Same thing goes kind of for one of these old bulkheads on the Queen Mary. 
essentially, but you can actually see them, but essentially there's a sheet of steel that is that is riveted to several like steel vertical beams and the vertical beams are the things that hold the load they cut holes in between the vertical beams kind of like how if you wanted to i don't know like let's say this was your house and that on the other side was going to be like i don't know like a, a like a model train room and you wanted your train to like come through the wall into your bedroom you could actually cut a hole in the drywall between the wood studs and the train can come out and come into this room which is a really cool idea to have for a future house, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that's essentially what they did with the bulkheads and the Queen Mary. They cut these holes so they could get a walkway through each room, uh, and it didn't. They didn't cut through structural steel. They just cut through the steel plating that was watertight. But the problem with that is now the rooms are no longer watertight. Um, so they have been approved to construct uh, the bulkheads up to 15 feet. Now the rooms are anywhere between 30 to 45 feet tall. So 15 feet only goes up to like right here, but that's still a lot better than what it is today, which is like the rooms are only watertight up to four feet. So watertight up to 15 feet is a lot better. And in some cases, the holes would be sealed up entirely just to make it watertight by 15 feet, which means some of these rooms will be 100% watertight. Um, so, yeah, so that's what they're going to be doing with that. And then in case there is water intrusion, which, again, like I've said in many videos, there is no signs the hole is leaking seawater. Um, any water that's been found inside the hole is coming from the decrepit... Um, neglected plumbing systems throughout the ship that are leaking water and they the water accumulates in the bottom of the ship from that but there is no water intrusion and when they did a recent ultrasound of the ship i'm talking like they did the ultrasound uh like just after summer of last year uh they found that uh that uh, the average thickness of the hull ranges around one inch thick because the originally the hull was built 1.25 inches thick so one and a quarter inches thick um it can be as as thin as about uh three quarters of an inch but it's essentially most of the ship is about an inch thick of steel currently so the corrosion on the steel for a nearly 90 year old ship is very good um even when the queen mary came in to long beach um the the ship was in really good shape um i wish i could there's a there's a general i wanted to general or captain or commodore i forget someone i wanted to quote um let me turn this camera around because i'm tired of holding it um there was someone I wanted to quote because they inspected the Queen Mary when the ship came to Long Beach for the first time. And they were like, I think they were a Commodore, to be honest. But they, they, they walked underneath the ship, they looked at the hull, and they were like, wow, you know, I've never seen in all my years a ship that is of this age that looks this good. And that was back when the ship came to Long Beach. So that's why the ship is still in relatively safe shape today compared to what it could be with that same neglect confusing story um but anyway what was i saying rebuilding the watertight bulkheads up to 15 feet combined with the fact that they are going to be installing 11 bilge pumps bilge pumps for those who don't know are the pumps that pump out water that accumulates in the keel of the ship the bilge keel of the ship pumps that out so if there is water intrusion uh it can it can try to slow it uh or even completely mitigate it um the other thing that will be installed along with the bilge pumps is an automatic water intrusion alarm so essentially if water comes in a uh, meters put in all over the bottom of the ship will have little flotation devices and when water comes in it'll lift those flotation devices and, he, and they're very sensitive, so they will detect water intrusion and will immediately alert uh, the people necessary um, 
Yeah, so that will be installed along with the bilge pumps. The ship currently has no working bilge pumps. It used to up until like 30 years ago, uh, but not anymore. Um, and so yeah, that will be installed. Uh, another big and this and this time actually controversial uh, project that they're working on is removing the remaining 22 lifeboats that are on the ship. Um, contrary to popular belief, they are not replicas. Uh, they, two of them are originals, 1936 originals to the ship. The others are actually from other Cunard liners of the 1960s, 50s era. So ships like the Sylvania, like many of the Sylvania's uh, lifeboats are on the Queen Mary. Nevertheless, they are in such bad shape, the city just wants to t throw them away. Now, um, the folks at QMI, uh, the organization I'm helping, you know, I'm, I'm volunteering for, uh, the folks at QMI have suggested uh, to, the, to the city that they could auction them off and stuff, but uh, I don't think there was really any they, any response to that, so I don't think the city will be trying to auction off the ones that are severely corroded. I think they just want to throw them away, frankly. But two, the the original two, 1936 originals, um, here is the the new news, the stuff that I was going to announce this, this month, um, is that uh, QMI, uh, which, again, 501c nonprofit, the only one dedicated to restoring the Queen Mary, has been approved for the project of um, of finding funding to restore the original 1936 lifeboats, the two the two lifeboats. Uh, those will be removed along with the others from the ship, and those two will be saved by the city. Uh, and the city wants. Uh, QMI to help find funding for it so that way they can actually restore those to um, to uh, hopefully their original appearance and condition and um, and then those will be put inside the ship uh, to quote storage but uh, who knows maybe we can help uh, them get the idea to put them on display the only place on the ship that they can fit because they're huge they're they're 30 I want to say 36 foot lifeboats, huge things, 12 feet wide, almost six feet tall from keel to, to the, uh, gunwales. There aren't any gunwales on them, but you get the idea. Um, about six feet tall. So the only place on the ship that they can actually like insert them into the ship for storage is inside the abandoned convention space, which is, which takes up part of boiler room. What is that? One, two, three, four. Part of boiler room five and part of uh, the forward engine room, which was gutted a long time ago. So th that's currently the convention space. And it just so happens there's a nice big entrance to get in there. So that's, I think, the only place they can really put the two lifeboats that will actually fit inside the ship. Um, there's currently no cargo hatches large enough uh to like lower them into the cargo holds or anything. So the good news is if they are put in the convention space, the convention space is located right next door to the Queen Mary Museum lobby, which is the access to the engine rooms. So technically, if you go to the Queen Mary Museum lobby, you could maybe turn left and in the next room might be the display for the lifeboat. So that's a, an idea I'm gonna try to pass along to a few people. Um, try to get some traction for it because if you're if you're going to restore the lifeboats why not put them on on display um maybe that's already their idea but they haven't said as much so we'll see i'm gonna i'm gonna fight for that restore the lifeboats put them on display so people can enjoy them the other uh, was there anything else many any major refurbishment oh that when they remove the lifeboats the davits that hold them will still remain they're not going to remove them the davits will stay behind um, so don't worry about them, you know, cutting off the davits and throwing them out. They're, they're going to stay. Um, I think that was it for the projects in terms of the Queen Mary's safety. Those things, the bilge pumps, the water intrusion alarm, the 
restoration of some of the bulkheads, and the, uh, what was that for? The um, lifeboats uh, are the most important of all the projects that need to be done on the ship. And the reason why is because oh, those all have to do with major safety. And those are the projects that are currently hindering the ship from reopening. L literally, the, um, the, the different uh, health and safety departments that overlook, you know, attractions like the Queen Mary have all said these things need to be fixed or else, you know, the Queen Mary can't reopen. So that, that's why those things have been immediately approved for being fixed this spring. So we'll probably see at the start of February some work really begin to do those things. And then I don't know if you noticed, but uh, on the the Queen Mary Hotel Facebook page, they posted for the first time in almost two years, saying that they're excited for things coming uh, in 2022. That's kind of hinting at the fact that uh, according to the projects, uh, the project scopes that have been listed by the city, it looks like the city wants these projects to be completed sometime in spring. Most likely, I'm estimating, the end of spring because we know things take longer than expected. So, um, so a lot of us at QMI believe the ship may reopen by the start of summer which is really good news. Um, again, the city wants the ship to reopen, and that's because when it's open, it's making money. It may not be making much money, but it's making a heck of a lot more than it's making just sitting there doing nothing. When it's sitting there doing nothing, all it is is consuming money. So they want the ship to reopen. And in case those of you who haven't kept up with the news that I've been putting on this channel, uh, they, the, the city is not at all interested in scrapping or sinking the ship. Not at all. Because those are both things that will cost them a ton of money up front with no promises of financial return. You know, doing some repairs of the ship, however expensive, it promises some return because with the ship open, it's at least earning some of that money back. However slow that might be, it's better than not earning anything back. So that's why they are 100% dedicated to preservation of the ship. Um, we will see in the coming weeks, months, and years uh, just exactly how far the preservation efforts will go. I can't, you know, I can't say like, oh, this is the best thing for the ship, but all I know is the ship will likely reopen start of summer and that is a good start so let's just take what we can for now and 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 try to keep the momentum going so that was a really long explanation i'm sorry but i mean heck that's what you guys are here for you guys want to hear about the queen mary um Kenneth says, hi Alex, it seems like in the Ocean Liner community, the exterior of the Aquitania is considered ugly. I disagree. Why do you think that is popular opinion? Unfortunately, Kenneth, I also <laughs> have to agree. I think that the outside of Aquitania is a, a, a little ugly. Um, it doesn't look sleek and beautiful. It, it, it looks very boxy and industrial. Um, just the shape of it. Um, yeah, very boxy and industrial. You know, you look at like ships like the Queen Mary, it has this sweeping uh, superstructure and, and you know, curvy shapes. And the Aquitania is very square and boxy. And the shape of the forward superstructure kind of looks a bit intimidating as opposed to fancy. I mean, you look at the, the you know, the forward superstructure of Titanic, um, it might be boxy and square, but it, it has kind of like some nice, like, you know, like uh, subdued physical features, which I think looks okay. I'm not going to say it looks beautiful, but it looks okay. But, but Aquitania, it's a very rough and boxy and abrasive looking ship. So yeah, that's why I would say. But the insides are supposedly really beautiful. I mean, that's why they call it the ship beautiful. Um, let's see. Uh, 
So Evan Shipcott asked that 20 minutes ago, so I think that I've already answered that one. Okay, let's see. Adam Painter says, when is a ship considered steam-powered? Technically speaking, today's nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are driven by steam. Is steam-powered exclusively reserved for coal-burning ships? No, not necessarily. I mean, the Queen Mary was an oil-burning ship, and it was considered steam. Um, you know, that's actually a really good question, because you're right. Technically, nuclear-powered ships can be considered steam, because they run on steam. Um, but, uh, but I think the important thing, though, is that some nuclear-powered ships, they boil steam to generate electricity, which the electricity drives electric motors, I believe. So, in that case, the propulsion wouldn't be steam, it would be electric. Um, but, yeah, I guess... I guess with a nuclear-powered ship or submarine, for instance, it would technically be steam-driven, uh, but uh, its power comes from nuclear reaction. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe someone who knows more than me can answer it. Um, Zoran says, would you ever want to visit the United States? I've seen the ship a few times. Um, I think if I was in the area, I would, certainly. Yeah, if I was in the area, I don't know why I would be, but if I was in the area, I'd be like, oh yeah, let's go see the United States, it's over nearby. Um, but I wouldn't go out of my way to travel over there and see it. I mean, for one thing, I live, you know, almost 3,000 miles away. Um, but the other thing, too, is just that, uh, there's nothing to see, you know? Like, the outside, yeah, uh... But I'd never be allowed to be on it. And even then, when you're on it and you're looking inside, it's just this big empty shell. There's nothing left that's a, that's original. I mean, aside from the engines, but there's no walls or anything. There's no fittings, no, no anything that's original. So it's just an empty shell. If the Queen Mary looked like that, if the Queen Mary was a complete empty shell, uh, no original features, and the exterior is rotting and stuff, and you couldn't even go on it, I probably would feel the same about the Queen Mary, too. Because what's left, you know? Like, there's no history left. So, um... Zachary says, Alex the Historian, what's your favorite Queen Mary ghost story? I don't think I have one. Because mostly, I don't think the Queen Mary is haunted. I mean, I granted, I did see a weird anomaly in the Shaft Alley. I mean, part of me thinks, oh, that might have been a ghost. I mean, what other explanation is there? But at the same time, I'm also kind of like, I don't see any ghosts on the Queen Mary. You know, like, I believe in ghosts. I mean, the apartment I live in is haunted. <laughs> You know, me and my sister and brother-in-law, we all agree this apartment is 100% haunted. There is no, no doubt about that. But, um, but as for, oof, as for, um, the Queen Mary, I never got that feeling being on there. You know, I worked at Golden Horseshoe at Disneyland. That was incredibly haunted. There are a few places in Disneyland that were haunted. But Queen Mary, I didn't feel that way. I saw one little anomaly that I could question, but I never felt that it was that way. But in terms of stories, a lot of them seem very out there to me. Yeah. I don't know. And some of them are made up by Disney, so I can't choose those because those are made up stories. I don't know. I honestly couldn't answer that. Um, Kenneth says, another question, do you feel like that first Queen Elizabeth was a better execution of the design language the builders of the Normandy were going for? Seems like exterior-wise that was the plan. Um, I don't know enough about Normandy to say whether that's what they were trying to do. I don't, it does, I mean, the way that Normandy looks, I wouldn't think that Queen Elizabeth is what they were going for. It looks like they were trying for something entirely different. And they got it. I mean, 
The outside of Normandy, I do not like to look at it. That does not look like a ship to me. That looks like some beastly thing that's swimming through the water. Doesn't look... It looks like something out of science fiction, to be honest. Or no, 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 like a, like a 1930s science fiction. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like a, like a, sh like a ship. It looks like some kind of weird 1930s spacecraft that is skimming along the water. And the interiors are cold and harsh and hard and uninviting. Um, let's see here. Hello from Hong Kong, says the Ocean Channel. Hello. Um, Jay Gurun says, update on the crash. Everyone is okay. The car just flipped. It flipped, but everyone's okay? I hope, I hope so. Jake Goodwin also asks, Wow, Hong Kong is where Queen Elizabeth sank. Is it still there? No, they uh, removed the entire thing a long time ago because it is a it, where it sank is a busy shipping channel. The ships come in, and today they drop off cargo and stuff. There's a big cargo-like area where they drop off all the the container boxes and things. So they are, and it was and it's sitting there in the middle of where they need to be. So they had to remove it. Um, it was removed within, within like a year or something like that from when it sank. So some people will like there's a, like this big rumor that like part of it's still down there, but it's not. Like, it's it's not. They removed it. It's all gone. Um, hello, sir ship builder. Thanks for joining us. I, I, I gotta catch up on these things because their comments going fast. Um, how do they coordinate all the plumbing, electrical, mechanical power decorations at all? It seems like so many moving parts that it would never get done. It's amazing that it can be done. To be honest, I don't even know. When I look at ships like the Queen Mary and you see all the plumbing, electrical, and all that stuff, it amazes me that people knew how to put that together. I mean, I know there's schematics and plans, and I know people went to school to learn how to build that stuff, but when I look at it, it looks like a maze of pipes and plumbing. And it astounds me that people knew how to install all that, knew where all of it was going and coming from, and knew how to operate it. That just blows my mind. But I mean, I suppose when you work at a when you work at a place long enough, you get to learn the ropes. You know what I mean? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, Jeremy says, "Was there ever a consensus on whether the Queen Elizabeth was overall a faster ship?" Yes, there is a consensus, and a lot of people don't know this, but the Queen Elizabeth was not a faster ship than Queen Mary. <sighs> a lot of people think, you know, that when you compare her engines and her, you know, her design and her hull and, you know, and, and th that she would have amounted to be a more faster ship, but they didn't want the Queen Elizabeth to win the Blue Ribbon because that belonged to the Queen Mary. And No, here's a simple answer. Look at the speed trials when when ships when they first before they even go on their maiden voyage, they do speed trials. Now the Queen Elizabeth admittedly didn't do her first trials until after World War II because as soon as she was finished construction, they put her into the war, um, and and she did not get her first maiden voyage or her speed trials, like technically speaking, until after the war. Um, but after the war, they did the speed trials. The ship, granted, was already six years old, but that it, that's not old by ship standards. Um, and the ship achieved a speed of like something like, I, if I'm remembering correctly, if someone's in there and, and they remember something completely different, but if I remember correctly, 30.29 knots was the maximum speed they were able to get a completely empty uh Queen Elizabeth to go, um, yeah, 30.29 knots, that was the maximum speed. She had a cruising speed of just over 27 knots, so she could technically, if she worked a little bit harder, do the normal 
uh, cruising speed of 28 knots that the Queen Mary did uh, on her voyages. So she could keep up, but maximum speed-wise, she wasn't that fast. So 30.29 knots was the fastest maximum achievable speed they got on the speed trials. Queen Mary's speed trials, uh, she got 32.84 knots. Now, when we drive cars and stuff, and we look at miles per hour, for instance, if the car was going, let, I mean, I know these don't compare, but let me just say this. If the car was going 30 miles an hour, but the car next to you is doing 32, you're like, that's not much of a difference. But that's not how speed is looked at on ocean liners. On an ocean liner, for ocean liners going 30 knots, um, and another ocean liner is going 32 knots, the ocean liner that's going 32 knots, for instance, will get across the ocean several hours faster than the other one. So that might even be six, ten hours faster, generally speaking. That's a huge difference when you're crossing an ocean. So the Queen Mary technically was always faster and was built to be faster. The Queen Elizabeth, they didn't need the Queen Elizabeth to be that fast. I mean, the, Qu the Queen Mary had raw power. The Queen Elizabeth didn't need that. Um, when you want to look at it technical-wise, Queen Mary had... 24 Yarrow boilers. They were the main boilers that drove the ship through the Atlantic. The Queen Elizabeth had 12. So half the amount. Because they knew they didn't need the raw power. They already have a ship that broke the, the speed record. So when they were designing Queen Elizabeth, they knew they didn't need to design a speed machine. They just needed to design a machine that could keep up with the Queen Mary. And they did. So that's the general concession. Con uh, that's the general uh, yeah, consensus is that Queen Elizabeth was two knots slower than Queen Mary's maximum. Uh, let's see. Sarah says, I'm sitting here paying bills and listening to last week's live stream of yours, and here you are with another one. Yeah. Yeah, I have to separate live streams because some people are here for the Disney content and some people are here for the ocean liner content. And uh, and so I have to try to I have to try to do both, you know. Deshaun says, uh, the would the Queen Mary possibly sink or capsize if no repairs are done? From my understanding, after I've read lots of reports, I've read, the, like, these reports are, like, sometimes 50 pages long, and I've read them. I've gone through each and every one because I wanted to have my information right. From what I have read, the Queen Mary is not currently in any danger of sinking or capsizing. Um, like I was saying earlier, this, the Queen Mary is manufactured to have a... a um, Steel, the steel plates on the hull were, were manufactured to be one and a quarter inches thick, so 1.25 inches thick. Um, and right now, even after, you know, almost, you know, like 90 years of corrosion, they're still generally an inch thick. So there is no worry that the Queen Mary will actually take on water and sink even if she took on water her, the, her double layered hull has like 66 watertight compartments in it and then above that the queen mary is going to have 18 so they're repairing the the bulkheads you know to a certain degree so yeah the the queen mary i don't think is in any danger of sinking or capsizing but the truth of the matter is is that if neglect continues, which it's not, because like I'm gonna say later in January, uh, like right before the 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 month ends, I'm gonna put out a official like update. But uh, but the Queen Mary is undergoing the basic repairs needed to keep her from sinking. Um, but yeah, if she were to be neglected uh, for you know maybe two to five years more then yeah, there might be a chance that water could intrude in the ship if nothing is done. But the reason why I say I don't think it's going to happen is because something is being done, and it's being done in the next, you know, two months. So, um, so yeah, the Queen Mary, I'm going to call it 
not at all in danger of sinking or capsizing because of the current events. So, um, hello, Drown Plays. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's a spammer here. Uh, let's see. Hello, Linda. Jake says, Alex, if you need a mod, I can help. Let's see if I can... Usually I can, like, click on somebody's... I don't think I can do it on mobile. I can do it on my computer, but not on mobile. Yeah, Jake, I would make you a, a mod if I could, but yeah, I'd have to do it on my computer. Um... Sir Ship Builder says, hey, Alex, what was the name of the of the ship Queen Mary armed. I mean like rammed? Like the ship that the Queen Mary rammed on accident during the war? I would, I think that's what you're saying. It's the HMS Curacoa. Um, yeah, it was a, in a cruiser. A lot of people are gonna say, Alex, you're pronouncing it wrong. It's Curacao, but uh, like I said in my recent video, the Curacao was named after the island off the coast of Queensland, Australia, not the Dutch Caribbean island of Curacao. So it's Curacao, and even Captain Boutwood of the HMS Curacao pronounced it Curacao. So that's just in case, because I know there's going to be people in the comments that are like, wait a minute, you're saying it wrong. Um, Harrison says, what are your thoughts on the SS United States? Um, it's not personally a ship of interest of mine. I mean, that's like asking me, like, what do you think of the Kaiser Wilhelm de Gauss? And I'm like, I don't really, it's not my thing. Um, I'm not going to knock it. You know, SS United States, fastest ocean liner in the world. Um, you know, it's technically still around, but it's an empty shell of what it once was. There's, it doesn't seem that there's currently anybody in the world that has the ability to restore it to its original glory, nor is there any incentive to, um, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I was trying to think if there was any, any other thoughts I had on it, but I don't, yeah, I don't really have any on, on the SS United States. Uh, Deshaun asks, why did people change from steam to oil, and also which one was faster? Like, are you talking about, like, the difference between steam and, let's say, like, a diesel-powered engine? Because there's, there's a very big distinction. So, the Queen Mary was a steam-powered ship, but to create steam, she burned oil. So, that's very different than, like, let's say, like... A steam locomotive, like a train, like a steam locomotive, versus a modern diesel electric locomotive. Because a steam locomotive has steam that powers pistons that moves the wheels, whereas a diesel locomotive uses a combustion engine, which, you know, which powers, uh, well, I mean, in some cases, a generator, but in older cases, they were direct line, they could move directly the, um, the, uh, the, 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 wait, wait, let's not get into that. That's, a, like, a whole other explanation. But, but, uh, but, yeah, like, a ship with a combustion engine, uh, was more fuel efficient than a steam engine. So that is why, generally speaking, the reason why we ever change, uh, the other reason, the only reason why we ever change the methods for which we operate things like ships is because usually it's either more efficient or it's faster. And those are the two factors. Uh, let's see. The Cunard White Star Liner says, do you think the Queen Mary's gutted and 
destroyed area should be restored. Some of them, yes. Um, some others I don't think are necessary um, from, a, from an economical point of view. So there are areas that I would love to see restored, like the third class restaurant, the second class restaurant. Um, it'd be cool if we could get the second class swimming pool restored. Um, it you know uh, some areas that are missing entirely, like the ballroom, the first class ballroom on promenade deck. Uh, it'd be nice if we could have you know a replica of that someday. Um, that kind of thing. Um, but certain areas are not necessary. So I think it's like, for instance, uh, the third class cabins. It's okay to have like, maybe like, like there's little enclaves in the ship where there's like a, like a bundle of five or six cabins. So it'd be cool if they could restore and, and put back five or six, uh, like a bundle of third class cabins that can be shown off to tourist groups. Um, but it's not necessary to restore a whole deck of third-class cabins because of the fact that at that point it would just be wasted money. And money, as you know, it's hard to spend money on the Queen Mary. No one's been doing it. So, um, so I would say if I were to plead to someone to spend the money on restoring third-class cabins, I would say restore three, four, five, maybe six of them. But it's not necessary to restore a whole deck of third-class cabins because they all essentially look the same. If you can just create five or six that are varying shapes that represent what they mostly look like, including a public bathroom that the cabins would have shared together, uh, then then you've got it covered. Um, so those are things that I would say that don't need to be restored entirely. Um, but it'd be great if we could have represent, an accurate representation of it. In fact, the famous room B340, the supposedly most haunted room on the ship, which, by the way, was entirely invented by Disney. It's not really a haunted room at all. Um, that room used to be a third-class room in the 1930s. Yeah, between 1936 and 1939, before it went to war, it was a third-class room. As a matter of fact, that room... B340 is actually made up of several third-class cabins. So it, it, if you can imagine, you're looking down at, at the hallway, right? And the hallway is like this, and then B340 surrounds it like a horseshoe, right? It's just a dead end, and it's that's B340. That was actually like five cabins, I believe. There was three on this side, two this way, and then there was a public restroom right here. And they turned that all into one room B340. And that was all third class in the past. And I thought, you know, B340 really is just a gimmick. And it's not necessary. And people are going in there, cutting themselves to put on YouTube videos and be like, I got hurt in this room that's made of imaginary creatures. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just get rid of B340 because it's doing nothing but bringing in the wrong kinds of people. Um, and restore B340 to third class cabins for use uh, as for tours and stuff. And the reason why I say that is because most of the other third class cabins were on the deck below that. But currently today, B deck is the lowest passenger deck uh, that you can go in terms of full-on exploration. Uh, the only part of our deck that's beneath it, because no, I know it's C deck is beneath it, but after the war they turned it into R deck. So R deck beneath B deck is, there's only one place you can access the first class main restaurant. And then you can look into the windows at the, at the pool, but forward of the pool is a whole area full of third-class cabins, or was third-class cabins. It's all gutted. Not necessary to do that. On B deck, where everybody else is, you can just install, like, just remove B340, turn it back into third-class cabins, so people have a taste of what it would have been like. And it's not, and it's not off the beaten path. You can get there even, uh, yeah, you can get there pretty easily. So, yeah. I think that's a smart idea. Uh, all right, so let's see. Evan Shipcott says, I mean, the Queen Mary is not haunted. You know, 
I don't want to knock people who think it is because, again, I have seen haunted places. And I know what it's like when people don't believe you because it's like you're sitting there going, look, I, I can't explain it to you. I can't prove it to you. But this is what I know for myself. And this is what I believe. I personally have don't believe that Queen Mary is haunted. But again, there's some people, you know, like I have a friend who's been going there his whole life, you know, and he's seen a lot of stuff on there. He believes that Queen Mary's haunted and I believe he saw stuff. I do. I would need to see it myself to know for sure. But but yeah, I don't want to knock people who believe the Queen Mary's haunted, but at the same time, I personally can't attest, I personally can't attest to it being haunted. I just didn't feel that way when I was on there. Yeah. It's funny, because some YouTubers, they go on there and they're like, oh, you can feel the pain and the, the sadness on this ship. And I go in there, I'm like, I feel happy. This place feels like it was a joyous place to be. Granted, there was some sadness, but that happens everywhere, you know. But the ship felt overall happy. But anyway. Um, let's see. Jeremy says, I read somewhere that Queen Elizabeth took over as the flagship in the late 1940s. Is this true? I mean, it, it didn't take over as flagship, but there was, but there was a time after the war that Queen Elizabeth was converted back into um, back into passenger service before the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary was still doing her her final war bride voyages um, and so Queen Elizabeth was put into service as a passenger ship. Um, but not as a flagship. The Queen Mary was still the flagship. Um, it was still in all the advertising and posters so uh yeah but there but yeah sometimes you you come across information like that and it's like half truth it's like well you know it's not necessarily true but it's not entirely false uh... Jeremy says, hello, Alex. Thanks for answering my question. I was told by one of the tour guides on the Queen Mary that the Queen Elizabeth had more powerful advanced boilers and could push 33 to 34 knots. No. Uh, th the Queen Elizabeth did have slightly more fuel-efficient boilers than the Queen Mary. Not much, because the advancement was only 40 years advancement on the technology. It wasn't like 10 years ahead of its time or anything like that. Um... They were a little bit more advanced in terms of like their ability to efficiently burn the fuel more than Queen Mary, which is why they only needed 12 of the boilers. But again, you have to look at the speed trials. If you just Google the speed, the, the, the speed trials of the original Queen Elizabeth, you will see that it tells you it's no more than, thir than 31 knots. It's no more than 31 knots maximum speed. And that ship was with, was with a minimum crew on it. And the Queen Mary, her her maximum speed was thirty two point eight four knots. She was just faster, you know. That again, that was that was literally the they tested the fastest the ship could possibly go on full speed, as part of their speed trials, and and the Queen Mary was just faster. You can't go faster than the maximum. <laughs> so um, yeah. Kenneth says, do you know at what point ship designers ditched the clipper stern, like Titanic's, for the cruiser stern, like Queen Mary's? Which one do you think looks better? I don't know. I'll, I'm just going to admit that. I don't know when they ditched the clipper stern. It had to have been in the 1920s. 
the SS Rex almost had a clipper stern, but it wasn't quite a clipper stern. Um, but I don't know. I'll have to leave that to someone else. But what I do think is, I think, I think Queen Mary's cruiser stern looks better than Titanic's stern. The clipper sterns are okay, but they, they look weird. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. I just like Queen Mary's cruiser stern. She looks like like a warship when you look at her cruiser stern. She looks like a warship. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. It is kind of... If you're like a lifelong Titanic fan, then when you look at Queen Mary's stern, it kind of looks like really weird, you know, to people. But, um, but when you... You know, if you were to spend some time away from Titanic and just look at a bunch of other ships, you start to realize that that, the t that certain features of the Titanic look weirder than they should be. Like when I look at Titanic now, with its with its boxy shape, like how there's almost almost no curvatures, it's just a straight box. It kind of looks weird, you know. So, it, yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Uh, and the Queen Mary, up above, has the cruiser stern. Looks more graceful. The ship has a more graceful curvature look to it. So that's kind of why I, yeah, I like I like the the cruiser stern more. But there was a time in my past where I preferred the clipper stern. Uh, okay, let's see. Try to catch up here. Uh, Jake says, what do you think happened to the two lifeboats that Disney took from the Queen Mary? So, the first lifeboat actually was, they were doing a lifeboat demonstration. And they used to do this in the 80s. They would actually operate the lifeboat davit, lower the lifeboat so they could show people what the lifeboat looked like as it was lowering down. It was a whole demonstration. Um, one day they were lowering it. No, this was not due to anybody's fault. I mean, not not... Not the tour guide's fault, I'm going to say. This wasn't the tour guide's fault. They were lowering the lifeboat as usual. It was just severely corroded, and it broke apart and yanked itself away from the falls and fell to the water below, disintegrating. Uh, and it was just done after that. <laughs> it was broken to pieces. This wasn't a wooden lifeboat, by the way. This was a steel, a riveted steel lifeboat. So it was just very badly corroded. So that's what happened. Um, and then they started using... They moved another one from the other side of the ship to use that for demonstrations. Uh, eventually, it looked like it too might one day buckle and destroy itself. So Disney removed it for restoration so they could use it for demonstrations. But then they lost it. To this day, no one knows where it is or if it still exists. Nobody knows. I don't know anybody who knows. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. So while there used to be 24 lifeboats on the Queen Mary, there are only 22 now. Yeah, sad how people, not, not, the, not the tour guide, but like the companies can be so irresponsible. Um, Oh, yes, Jake, I've been watching The Second Empire Strikes Back. Very interesting. I watched their most recent video. Um, Aloha says, Alex, the ship isn't really floating on its own. It's attached to the land side. There's no more motion to the old ship. No, there is, actually. If you look at my video, I, I, I'm not even telling you. Like, you can look right now. You can open the second tab or something. If you look at my video, um, uh, it's called the... Uh, Queen Mary virtual tour in 4K. If you look at the beginning of the video where I'm standing on the the elevator tower that allows you to go on the gangways onto the ship, if you look at the gangways of the opposite tower, uh, they are all the gangways are pointed up. So the tower is here with all the elevators. The ship is over here. The gangways are all pointed up. At the end of the night, like towards the end of the video, if you look at towards the end of the video, I look back at the same tower. All the gangways are like this, because the tide went down. The ship lowered. You can actually see the difference. The, early in the day, they're like this. At the end of the day, they're like that. You can see the difference in my video. 
the Queen Mary is floating in the water. And the reason why she has to float in the water is because of California's earthquakes. She's not built to be on earthquake land. She's built to be able to sit in a dry dock for, you know, a couple of months while she gets repair work. But earthquakes will literally shake her to pieces. She's entirely riveted. No, no welds. Even if she was welded, those welds are not the same strength of welds we have today on steel. So they're, they would not last anyway. But she's entirely riveted. And if you look at Southern California, there's almost no riveted structures left. They don't last. They fall apart. So they knew when they brought the Queen Mary over, they, she needed to float in the water, like actually rise and fall with the tide. Um, that's also the reason why if you go into the boiler rooms today, you can actually hear the rubber bumpers on the dock uh, actually scraping against the ship. You can hear the... <laughs> People think that that is the sound of a ghost, you know, like hammering at the walls. It's the sound of the rubber bumpers like scraping the ship and it's <laughs> like that. And it's all throughout the day. The ship does rise and fall with the tide and I have video proof of it happening. The beginning and the end of my, of my Queen Mary virtual tour video, you can see the gangways up at the beginning of the video, down at the end of the video. And it's really cool. So, um, yeah. Uh, Let's see. And Kaivara says, Hey Alex, two questions. Have you watched A Night to Remember and or read the book? And What's the progress on the final part of your third part, or your three-part series on the Queen Mary in World War II? I have seen the movie, A Night to Remember, pretty good. I don't remember it that much. It was so long ago, probably 10 years ago that I saw it, but it was pretty good. Um, and the part three of the Queen Mary, I was, I've been working on it all day today, and after I finish the live stream, I'm going to continue working on it. My hope is to get it published tomorrow. I had to push it back because I was going to publish it yesterday, but it's taken so long to put it together. It's it's a really detail-packed video, which the more detail there is, the more information I have to find and put up. So, um, like more images, I mean, more in images I have to find and put up. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to have it tomorrow by 4 p.m. Pacific time, but it's going going to be close. I'm going to tell you, like, I'm probably going to be up till midnight working on this thing. And then tomorrow when I wake up, I have to type up the subtitles. A lot of people don't know this, but I actually like put together subtitles for my history videos. Um, most channels, they, they turn on the automatic subtitles and automatic subtitles are only so good because sometimes you might say like, I don't know, I don't know, steam turbine or something. Right. And the, automatic subtitle be like, I don't know, steam turbine or something, you know, like, so, uh, so yeah, I actually type up subtitles. It takes me a long time to get them all perfectly aligned into the video. So it makes sense. And the words aren't running over each other and stuff, but yeah, so that's, that takes a long time. And then, uh, yeah, typing up all the references, the, the credits, linking people's videos, because I use a lot of people's information in order to put it on my videos. I have to credit them, and oh boy. So it takes me, like, it'll take me a, a good beginning half of the day on Monday, which is tomorrow. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna, I'm gonna cutting it really close. Um... Oh, thank you, James Style. You said, um, I've enjoyed your videos. Money for some tea. Oh, thank you so much. 
Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, you guys, if you ever want to buy me a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something, um, you can either uh, donate on my Patreon. I should put a link somewhere. Um, let's see. Uh, you can look up Alex Historian on Patreon. I'll try to put like a comment beneath this live stream for that. Um, you can also uh, find me on Venmo under Alex the, uh, Alex the Historian. Is it? Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, uh, Square, there's a link on my channel for Square, uh, yeah, so, think about that. Uh, let's see, uh, who else's comments here? Jeremy says, what are your thoughts on Olympic Titanic switch theory? It didn't happen. <sighs> It didn't happen. It doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't want to get too deep into it because we're already like running over an hour on this live stream. But, but um, you know, most Titanic historians will also agree that it didn't happen. It's just some silly thing. Yeah, it didn't happen. It's yeah. I don't want to get too deep into it. The other, the other reason, too, is because I just don't know as much as other people about Titanic. So I, I personally am not the person to prove it to you. But there are a lot of people who know their stuff who will say that it didn't happen. And, yeah. Um, oh my gosh, thank you, Dillian, for the, for the $25. Here's some help for your new apartment deposit. What about that submarine that's right by the Queen Mary? Um, so... The submarine that's right next to the Queen Mary is actually in really bad shape. Um, there, so a, a submarine has two holes, an outer hole and an inner hole, and the outer hole is worn to tissue paper. It is completely flooded, rotted out. You know, they say like if they tried to wrap ropes around it so they could lift the, the submarine out of the water, they said it would break up into several pieces. Um, one of the rooms in the submarine is supposedly flooded. Um, yeah, it's just in really bad condition. And it doesn't have very many historical artifacts in it. Pretty much nothing of value. They've already removed that years ago. Um, I think they said it was put onto some kind of dry land display. So all the, all the, m the most interesting stuff about the... Uh, not interesting, I, I should say. The most valuable stuff on the submarine is already removed anyway. So, yeah, the the submarine is is not it's 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 not gonna yeah it's it's not salvageable. Um, now, as for what's gonna happen to it, unfortunately, that's one of the biggest issues. Is that the last owners of the submarine was this person who is now elderly and living in a nursing home. Uh, they are not able to care for the submarine. They are just, from my understanding, they're too old. Uh, and they don't have the means anymore. Uh, so, from what I heard, the city is currently trying to find who would legally be the current owner of the submarine, if there was one. Um, because, supposedly, the elderly former owner supposedly his company left the submarine in the care of uh, Urban Commons, which was the last company to lease the Queen Mary and care for it for about four or five years. So Urban Commons says, no, no, we were not told the submarine was our responsibility. But there's some paperwork that says that they were, like that they are by technicality like yeah, there was no paperwork saying they bought it it was more like it was more like the company that once owned it was just like okay well here urban commons can take can take care of it and then eventually when the owner got too old and and you know and became unable to care for it 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 has by technicality fallen on urban commons because they were the last people to care for it um, and Urban Commons, as you know, is completely bankrupt. They have no money. Their CEOs are undergoing, you know, uh, 
fraud investigations and stuff like that. So, um, currently, the submarine is in limbo. Uh, if it sinks, there is a possibility it could tumble down the embankment because it's not. There's no flat ground underneath it. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a decline from the side of the harbor down to the bottom. So if the submarine were to sink and all its chains and ropes were to snap from the weight of it sinking, it could tumble underneath the Queen Mary, and whenever the Queen Mary comes down on low tide, her bow could hit it, and there could be an issue. I say could, 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 because there is a possibility that none of that could happen. The mooring lines could be perfectly strong enough to prevent the, the submarine from tumbling, but again, We've, we haven't seen anything like this before, so we don't know, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the city wants the submarine to be removed. They estimate that it might cost about $5 million to remove it. Because once you pull it out of the water, which, by the way, again, it's going to break up to a ton of pieces, the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is going to be all over that. They're going to be like, hey, you can't have all these chemicals and stuff leaking into the water from the breakup and the debris going into our ocean. You know, there's just so many things that have to be done, and it's really unfortunate. I think the submarine is in the way of the Queen Mary. It, it, you can't get a good picture of the Queen Mary without seeing the rotting submarine in front of it. So I hope somebody is able to do something. Um, and, all right, so... Uh, oh, Kaivara says, also, thanks for getting my name right. I try my best. I try my best to, to try to, you know, pronounce things correctly. Actually, it's kind of funny. I, I pronounce certain words certain ways, and people will try to correct me on my videos about, like, these words. Like, the most recent one was when I talked about the Aussie troops, you know, the Australian troops. Um, someone commented, oh, it's pronounced Aussie. But the thing is, is that actually, like, the only people in the world that I can tell so far that pronounce it Aussie with S is Americans. It's a legitimate American pronunciation, but most of the world just says Ozzy, like Ozzy Osbourne. So, yeah. But yeah, that's fun. one of the funny things is I usually pronounce things correctly, even if, uh, even if, like, when it comes to words itself, some people are like, wait, you didn't pronounce that, right? Um... What are your thoughts on the current status of Queen Elizabeth II? Looks weird without lifeboats. I mean... I mean, yes, a ship looks better with its lifeboats. But in most cases, the lifeboats can actually be a hindrance to the preservation of a ship. Look at the Queen Mary, for instance. You know... The lifeboats, their weight is pushing down on the upper decks of the ship. True, if they had kept everything in good shape, we wouldn't be in this problem, in this situation. But lifeboats do not directly affect the success of a museum like the Queen Mary. Uh, so it's one of those things where it's like, on a ship like the Queen Elizabeth II, or QE2 as people call it, um the lifeboats are not necessary and in fact they will become a money pit of sorts because you don't make money f from the lifeboats being up there and so if in in my point of view and I, again i prefer looking at ships with lifeboats on them but in my point of view if the lifeboats are only going to prevent the ship as a whole from being preserved then you might as well remove them and put them in storage or on display. Display is better, but in storage or on display inside a protected place. I would love for all 22 of the lifeboats on the Queen Mary to be, you know, some of them on display, some of them in storage, protected. But, um, but I will, I will have to admit, those lifeboats they cost a whole lot of money without giving anything in return. And because of that, it has an effect on the ship as a whole. Um, yeah, so 
it's uh, it's really difficult, you know. It's really difficult to ex- to not to explain it, but to to wrap your head around it, you know. So, so the QE2 without lifeboats, it does look a little weird, but frankly, most of the time when you spend time on these ships, you're inside, and the inside, the preservation of the inside is what matters the most. And the Queen Mary, I know a lot of people are worried that the Queen Mary will look really weird without her lifeboats. She probably will. We've, we're so used to seeing her with lifeboats. She'll probably look really weird, but on the inside, she'll still be the Queen Mary. She'll still look beautiful on the inside. And the best part is, you know, even though we have to remove those lifeboats, at least the ship itself will remain for years, teaching people the importance of the things that happened aboard the ship. You know, especially during World War II. So, it's one of those things where it's like we have to look at the lesser of the two evils, you know. Uh, let's see. Aloha Mail says, who is the current hotel management company for the Queen Mary? So, there's for the past 11 or 12 years, there has been the same hotel management company. They are called... Um, Uh, something. Oh gosh, I just had it on top of my top of my head. No, I don't. I can't. I can't remember. But there's been the same company for twelve years. They are still currently, technically, the hotel operators of the Queen Mary. That's, but that's very different from, it's not, not to confuse people, but that's very different from, uh, like, the lease holders of the ship. The lease holders, they're the ones who literally hold the lease for the ship. They have the say in what happens to it, and they contract out this hotel management company to run it as a hotel and museum. Um, so, the, so the company that's been contracted for the last 12 years has seen many different lease holders, you know, basically holding the keys of the ship. So, um, but if you're asking about the, the hotel company, I can't remember what it is anymore. Jeez, I used to know it. Um, Evolution Hospitality. Evolution Hospitality. That's the name. Yeah. So they, they, when the ship reopens, uh, beginning of summer, uh, Evolution Hospitality will still be running the day-to-day operations of the ship as they have been doing for the last 12 years. Um, but as for the last leaseholder of the ship, that was Urban Commons. Urban Commons, uh, they had the ship for about five years. And then before them... Oh, I forget who was before them. But yeah, anyway, there will be no more leaseholders to the ship. They, The city has destroyed the lease thing and now the city has full control of the ship for now i think they're looking to give the ship to the to the port authority so the ship will not move anywhere it'll stay right where it is but it its new owners will not be the city of long beach but more likely port authority of long beach so yeah we'll see how that goes but there'll be more information in my January update of the Queen Mary. So tune in for that. I don't know when it's going to happen, but closer to the end of the month. Um, Jake says, will they make replacements or, or um, what's the word? Replicas of the lifeboats. So that way the ship doesn't have to be without them. As we would like that to happen, you know, like me and a bunch of fans, we would love to see replicas of the lifeboats put on the Queen Mary. So that way, at least it looks like it still has them. Unfortunately, that costs a lot of money that nobody has right now. Perhaps, I mean, right now, QMI, uh, the nonprofit that I'm volunteering with, uh, we are talking about currently collecting money. So if you want to donate, you can go to QMI.care and on their page is a donation thing. We have been approved to uh, to raise funds for the restoration of the two original 1936 Queen Mary lifeboats that will be brought down. Those will be uh, 
refurbished, preserved, you know, the way that they should look, and hopefully put on display within the ship. I'll have more information as the, as time goes on. Right now, this is still the early stages, but if you'd like to donate towards that, um, you can go to qmi.care, and then when the video is over, I'll put a link in, in the description and in a comment or something. Um, but yes, so the lifeboats are important because I know they're just lifeboats, but they were, the Queen Mary's lifeboats was the original fleet of lifeboats that were motorized. So no other ship before the Queen Mary had a fleet of motorized lifeboats. They were all diesel engine lifeboats. That they had, uh, they had um, combustion engines. Uh, they also were very interestingly designed. They were designed with, uh, well, first of all, riveted steel hulls, but they were designed with tanks of air so if the lifeboat were to take on water completely it wouldn't it wouldn't sink it would be fl flooded with water but it would stay floating because it had built-in air tanks that kept it buoyant also the original lifeboats had um had uh watertight bulkheads so if there was a hole or something in the ship or the, um, the lifeboat it would fill up one compartment but wouldn't necessarily flood the whole thing it was one of the like coolest things about the lifeboats. So again, but yeah, they were the first fleet of motorized lifeboats on any ocean liner. So today when you see lifeboats on modern cruise ships and they're all motorized and stuff, you can thank the Queen Mary for that. So that's one of the reasons why we should preserve these last two lifeboats. Because once they're gone, they're gone. You know, that history, that innovation is gone. So we gotta preserve them put them inside the ship on display so people can walk to them and appreciate them for the innovation that they are. So anyway, I will put a link in the description. Otherwise, you can just visit qmi.care. It's that easy, qmi.care. And you can see where you can donate and stuff towards that. And then we will be putting together a video presentation for our plans for helping to restore the lifeboats and talk about who QMI is and what our goals are. So anyway, I'm going to call that done for today because we're already at one and a half hours, but thank you all so much for watching. Sorry if I didn't get to everybody's comments. I try to as much as I can. Um, but anyway, uh, hopefully tomorrow I'm hoping will be the third and final installment of the Queen Mary's War Years video. Uh, after that will be uh, a video about Walt Disney's private apartment in Disneyland. Um, and then in the coming days and weeks will be more fun videos about the Queen Mary and, and like operations on the ship. Like, why don't they put it on land? Why, you know, why don't they sail it again? That kind of thing. Um, lots of other stuff coming. And then when I move to my new apartment next month, uh, I will have all new content and a second channel with all new content on it as well. So lots of exciting things coming. Thank you all for joining me. I'll see you all next time. And I hope you all have a magical day. Bye-bye.